Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. 2024 is here, and the new year is always a great time for some personal reflection. One year ago, I made a nice video talking about goal setting in general and encouraging you to make your first game in 2023. I just watched it again, it's still a really great video, the advice here is really timeless. So if you haven't seen this one, definitely go give it a watch. In general, my best tip on goal setting is simply write down your goals. If you just do that, if you just write down your goals, that massively increase your chances of actually achieving those goals. So if you watched this video one year ago, I hope you wrote down your goals and I hope you achieved your 2023 goals. Then here I also talked about my own personal 2023 goals. So let's go through them one by one and see if I achieve them. I defined some really important primary goals, then some interesting secondary goals, and finally some fun personal fitness goals. So let's go through them one by one and I'll try to come up with some general takeaways that should hopefully be helpful to you. Starting with the primary goals and starting with the very first one, which was the goal to release Total War Liberation on Steam. This is the game that I announced all the way back in 22. It's still a really interesting game with tons of interesting design logic. It's kind of a mix of XCOM mixed with some automation elements and a persistent open world. I'm still a huge fan of the idea that I have in my head. However, as you might know, I pivoted away from this idea earlier this year. I basically realized that Total War and Liberation, this was going to take a massive amount of work to actually finish. It was highly unlikely that I was going to be able to do it in this year. But still, I really, really wanted to publish another Steam game in 23. My last one was Battle Royale Tycoon, which came out all the way back in 2019. That's way too long ago, so I definitely really wanted to publish a game this year. That's why in the beginning of this year, I pivoted the way to a much simpler idea that I could actually produce in one year. That turned out to be Dinky Gardens, which was indeed fully produced and fully developed and fully published this year. It was quite stressful to build that game in just about 7 months, but I'm still very happy with the final result, I'm very happy with how it came out. So while I technically did not achieve this goal, I technically did not launch Total War Liberation on Steam, I did achieve the actual goal behind it, which was to launch another game. So yeah, for this one, I do consider it a success. And now for 2024, the hope is to finally get back to Total War Liberation. The takeaway from this one for you is to simply know that it's okay to pivot, it's okay to analyze your plans, and if something isn't going according to plan, it's perfectly okay to adapt to a new plan. I mean, obviously, don't just constantly pivot from idea to idea, basically don't just constantly abandon every idea as soon as it becomes difficult. Don't do that constantly, but definitely do know that it's okay sometimes to adapt a plan. Once you analyze your current state, then you see that things are a bit different than they were when you first originally made the plan. Then my second primary goal was to publish a free complete course, and yep, this one was indeed a huge success. I did manage to publish the course, or actually it was two courses, one on making it in single player, another one on multiplayer, and thankfully the reception has been pretty excellent. It is by far the most successful video on this channel with 1.8 million views. In all the comments, they are all extremely positive, with tons of people really happy with knowledge included in this course. They're really happy with how it's completely free and how it's really high quality. Personally, I especially love how so many people really enjoy the focus on writing good clean code. The course is not on just making a game, but actually making it properly. That was something very important to me, and I'm really happy to see that people also value that. Reading the literal thousands of comments, reading all of this has been wonderful, and answering tons and tons of questions has been really great for my own personal journey to help me better improve in the ways that I teach and provide extra clarification on just about anything. And of course, I also like how despite the full video, the full course being available over here for free on YouTube, the full 10 hours, despite that, there were still over 400 people who bought the completely optional paid version and a bunch more fired some super thanks on the video. I invested a bunch of money in the course by actually hiring an artist to build all of the assets, getting a musician for all the music, just so I had the rights in order to be able to distribute them along with all the project files. And thanks to these general people, I did manage to break even on those costs and even made a little bit of money. That was definitely not something that I expected based on a completely free course, so I'm really happy with that. It was a ton of work to make these two courses, the 17 hours of excellent content, so I'm really, really happy with the very positive reception. Looking at this, I definitely want to make some more free courses. I have some interesting plans to mix both paid and free courses in 2024, so this should be a really interesting year. In fact, right now, the next big project that I'm currently working on is a complete c -sharp course, going everywhere from complete beginners to advanced, and I'm planning a similar plan, trying to make it free with an optional paid version, so stay tuned for that. Now, on this topic, I'm not sure I can come up with a good general takeaway that is applicable unless you also have some kind of channel teaching game development. Maybe the takeaway is sometimes it's good to do things just for the community as opposed to always for profit. So perhaps the takeaway could be contribute to some open source software, maybe if you have some knowledge, maybe mentor some beginner, or simply spend some time answering questions on Reddit or Discord. So for this goal, yep, I can also consider this a massive success. Then the third primary goal, making complete DOTS 1.0 course. Now for this one, yeah, it didn't really work out. The reason is simply because I really, really wanted to make a game this year, and making Dinky Guardians alongside keeping videos on this channel Doing that was a huge challenge, definitely more difficult, definitely a lot more work than I originally anticipated. So I didn't have time for even more big projects other than these ones. So technically this one did not work out. 
Although right now I actually just recently got back into DOTS. I've been spending the last few weeks researching Entities 1.2 to make another huge free tutorial. I still have to record and edit this one, but this is going to be the next video on this channel. So stay tuned, maybe this Friday or Saturday. And after I finish the C-Sharp course, the next big project that I want to make is indeed this DOTS course. And speaking of that, let me just ask you a simple question. On making a DOTS course, what kind of game would you like to see made? I've got a bunch of ideas for genres that I think would be useful to make something using DOTS. But I still haven't decided on anything, so do let me know your thoughts in the comments. And the general takeaway from this topic. The general takeaway is really based on the fact that I failed this primary goal. And the takeaway for you is simply don't be too hard on yourself if you eventually don't complete your goals. Personally, I could be really upset at myself right now for not achieving this goal, but really two things come to mind. Number one, I know the reason why I couldn't do it is perfectly valid. I was already working on a game and a ton more stuff, so it was literally impossible for me to work on another big project on top of everything that I did. And more importantly, number two is I simply know that would not be helpful. Punishing yourself when you don't achieve a goal is really not a good use of your time and energy. If you quote unquote fail to achieve a goal just like I did, then simply accept that and move on. There's simply no point in punishing yourself and dwelling in the past. Just move on and try to achieve that goal in the future, which is exactly my plan, exactly what I'm going to do in 2024. So out of my primary goals, I managed to achieve two of them and I failed one of them. So I think that's a pretty good result, I'm definitely happy about this. Then on the secondary goals, first of all, make more live streams. I just checked the numbers and I ended up doing exactly the same amount that I did in the previous year. I did a total of 10 live streams throughout the year. So it didn't quite work out, but still I wouldn't call this a miss. While I could have done better, I do think this was a pretty decent result. Honestly, for me, making live streams is still quite stressful. I am very much an introvert and just being here facing a camera, this is still quite stressful, still quite intimidating. Thankfully, I have gotten quite a bit better at just this, recording to a camera, but doing it live is a whole different thing. So the fact that I pushed through it and still managed to do 10 live streams, I'm pretty happy with that. Although this goal, I'm definitely keeping it for 2024. I would really love to one day get to the point where I can easily make a live stream every week and keep a nice regular schedule. Speaking of schedule, the next goal was keep a regular video schedule. So the goal was to continue posting two to three times per week. And on this one, yep, I definitely did achieve this one. Honestly, I'm pretty impressed with myself. I'm pretty happy with the fact that I achieved this goal. Again, because I spent so much of this year working on both the free courses and on Dinky Guardians. Like I said, it was really tricky, really stressful working on the game and making regular videos at the same time. In total, I think I made 160 videos this year. And even though I grossly underestimated the amount of effort to be able to do this whilst making a game at the same time, even though I still managed to achieve both of those, so I'm really happy with myself. Although in 2024, one of my goals is to hopefully have a bit more of a balanced life, rather than working non-stop the whole year. And one of the things that supposedly helps me with that is what was one of my secondary goals, hire an editor. And yep, this year I did experiment with a bunch of editors, and the experiment has been pretty successful. Now I still edit most of my videos, I would say maybe about 70% of them. That is secondly still quite a bit high, but it is less than 100%, which was the case for the past four years. So compared to that, I would say it's going pretty good. Hiring an editor gives me a bit more time, which I can then dedicate to make more complex videos or simply have a little bit of time off. The next goal was hit 500k subs. And if this one was awesome, I did manage to achieve this one right after Unite. So really, thank you all so much for watching the videos and subscribing to the channel. It's honestly really insane for me to imagine 500,000 people clicking that button. These past five years have definitely been crazy. I'm really happy with this journey and I really hope you've learned a ton from the videos. So thank you all so much for being here. I do love doing this and I definitely plan to continue doing it for many many years in the future. Who knows, hopefully in a few years I'll hit the 1 million mark. Then the next goal hit 50 million views. This one not quite, but kind of almost got it. The current total is 47 million, so should be able to hit that within the next 3 to 4 months. In terms of views, the channel technically didn't grow too much, but in terms of watch time, that one did increase by quite a bit. Some like a 40% increase, probably a lot due to the free 10 hour course. So this one technically didn't hit it, but still very happy with the current growth of the channel. And then finally, something very personal are my fitness goals. Like I've mentioned several times, it's something that is really important to me. And I really think it's one of the main reasons why, even though I work way too much, I still haven't suffered from burnout. I work non-stop, seven days a week, with no vacations, holidays, or even weekends. And the two reasons why I can't do that without burning out is, well, first of all, it's actually my dogs. I love going with them on regular walks, that really helps me disconnect a bit from my PC. And secondly, my gym time, which I really don't sacrifice for anything. It is really extremely important to me in order to be able to continue functioning. So for these goals, first of all, hit a new deadlift PR. And for this one, I didn't actually hit it. I didn't focus too much on deadlift this year. And I haven't really tried going for a new PR in a while. I did a few sets a few weeks ago with 175 kilos. And that one found pretty good. So if I tried, maybe I could get a new PR. Then on the bench, the goal was to get a new PR. Back then, my absolute max was 110 kilos. And this one, yep, this one, I did manage to achieve it. Just a few weeks ago, I did two reps with 115. And that found pretty good. The bar was moving nice. It was controlled. That was great. 
Lately I've been doing sets of 8 with 100 kilos, which a few years ago this was my dream, to be able to get to the point where I could reliably do sets of 8 with 100 kilos with two plates. And yep, right now I can definitely do that. For me the bench was honestly usually not my favorite exercise, but lately this year this has definitely been something that I've been loving. The next goal was run 20 kilometers. Now just before I defined these goals for 2023, just before this I had run my first 10k race ever, so back then the goal was to run 20 kilometers. And yep, this one was definitely a massive success. Back in March, I did join the Lisbon Half Marathon, and I did manage to complete it. Then I did a ton of training, almost ran a thousand kilometers this past year, and in October, literally just one week after launching my game Dinky Gardens, I did the Lisbon Full Marathon and I did manage to complete it. I mean, I did pretty much limp to the finish line, I was all messed up for the last 10 kilometers, but I did go past the finish line. My total time was 5 hours and 7 minutes, so definitely a lot of room to improve, but I'm very happy with this result. And the final one hit 10% body fat. Honestly, I've had this goal for the past something like 7 years, and this one, nope, I definitely did not achieve it. Personally, I have a lot of trouble with food control, and despite running a ton last year, I still managed to eat way too more than I ran. The lowest I got was probably 15.5% body fat with about 81 kilos. I have to say, when I first started going to the gym seriously, that was about 7 years ago, and that was when I learned about the concept of bulking. And of course, as soon as I saw that, I definitely loved that concept right away. Basically, you're telling me I can eat whatever I want and I'm going to be able to put on muscle and that's actually a good thing. I was around 76 kilos back then. I thought that was awesome, so I just ate everything I could find. And in about 3 months, I went from 76 to almost 90. And I have pretty much stayed bulked up ever since. I'm always going between 82 and 84. So this goal of hitting 10%, this has been my constant goal for the past few years and I still haven't hit it. But hopefully 2024 is the final year. On this topic of fitness, I highly, highly encourage you to do something. You don't have to take it as seriously as I do. Personally, I love it, so I do it a lot. But you can just do something basic, just something like 45 minutes, 3 times a week, that is more than enough. If you just do that, that will give you a ton of benefits. And you don't have to do lifting. There's a million ways to train, so just find what you enjoy the most. Especially considering how game dev and programming, these are very sedentary jobs. You are sitting all the time. So combining that with some physical fitness, I think that is extremely important. Personally, I want to keep making games by the time I'm 80, so I definitely take this part quite seriously. So looking at this whole list, I'm quite happy with the results. I did manage to hit most of my goals. Like I said, the original video is great, and on the topic of goals, this advice is really timeless. So I definitely encourage you to go watch this video. And the title that I made for the video was Make Your First Game in 2023. So let me ask you, did you make your first game in 2023? Did you achieve your goals, both your professional and your personal goals? I really hope you had a great 2023, and I really hope you have a successful 2024. Personally, I'm very much looking forward to all the projects that I have planned for 2024. So once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.